Hi guys, I'm Will Clark Hamster and I thought I'd do another quick video for you today. Um, and what I want to talk about is this. Um, now you may have seen it in one of my other videos. This is the cold steel Viking hand axe. Um, and as you may know, I bought two of these. Um, one of them I was going to convert into a wood carving axe. The other I was going to use for um, a little bit of sort of... Um, uh, what's the word for it? Um, experimental archaeology. Um, now that basically I, I, uh, I used to do a little bit of um, Western martial arts or HEMA as some people know it um, and I kind of quite like to get back into that albeit in a very small way. Um, so this is the one that I'm going to be using for my um, sort of practice with if you like. Um, now I've already shortened this handle, this was a 30 inch handle, I've shortened this down by about 4 inches because I, I feel that's kind of where I wanted it to be, that was the right size for me. Um, and as you can see I've kind of given the handle a little bit of a wrap, um, firstly with um, the kind of thing, a bit of suede that you'd use on maybe a hockey stick and then a bit of a tennis handle wrap there as well. Um, now there's nothing wrong with the bare wood, I just wanted something a little bit more comfortable for me um, just because I'm going to be kind of flailing around with this um, and so far it's been quite a good axe. The problem being, and I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of this, um, so this is how it came out of the factory, Let's get this piece of paper lined up and it's really not sharp. Um, and that's kind of very uh, standard I've found for most of the cold steel uh, axes and tomahawks. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, it should be fairly simple to sharpen. Um, and that's what I wanted to do on this video today. Um, now, I don't think I've actually done a video specifically about sharpening axes before, um, and it will work exactly the same for this as it would do for any of my wood carving axes, um, outdoor axes, that kind of thing. Um, and what I've got behind me here is just a little stand for my, uh, my stone to go on, um, and inside this um, little container which I've purloined from my wife, so uh, if you can keep that between us that'd be much appreciated. Um, and inside here, just soaking in some water, is a water stone. Um, now this is, uh, I think this is made by a company called Ice Bear, and you've got two grits on here. The uh, slightly green coloured one on this side is a 250 grit, and then you've got a 1000 grit on the back. Um, and I plan on using both of those grits in this video. Um, so the 250 will basically help sort of slightly shape and reprofile the edge on this axe, um, and then the 1000 will just essentially refine that down get rid of all of the burrs and the sort of the marks from the other side um, and just generally sharpen it up. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring the camera a little bit closer in, I'll set up my stone and I'll show you how we're going to go about this. Right then guys, so this is my setup. So first and foremost we've got the stand, um, really really recommend these, they're really good for keeping these stones nice and stable. Doesn't work brilliantly on a surface like this but if you're doing it indoors, especially on like a countertop or something like that, the rubber feet just really keep it steady. Um, and the other important thing to say, if you're using water stones like these instead of um, sort of regular oil stones, um, I prefer these personally. Um, they don't necessarily do a better job than oil stones, um, but I just I find it's a lot easier to sort of um, you know soak them in water rather than faffing around, making sure you've always got oil with you, that kind of thing. Um, and I, I just tend to find I, I work better with these than I do an oil stone. Um, and the important thing with these, if you are using water stones, is you need to soak them for a good 15-20 minutes before you use them um, and you get much, much better results. I've tried just sort of dipping them in water for sort of 20-30 you know, seconds, taking them out, and you really need that water to sort of penetrate into the stone before you start using it. Um, and the only other thing I'm going to use really is this, which is just a piece of rag, just to clean this off so you can check the blade as you need to. Um, and that's it. So essentially, if you are going to be sharpening an axe like this, um, I find it much, much easier, if it's possible to do so, um, to actually take the head off the axe, because it gives you a lot more freedom of movement. Unfortunately, I can't do that with this axe. Um, although there is a set screw in the back, and you should be able to just take this out and pull the head off, um, the head is very well wedged on here, and I, I don't really want to mess around taking it off and get, have running the risk of it loosening up. Um, if you're using something like a, a, a Grand Sfors axe or a Halter Fors or something like that, you can't remove those heads without having to rehandle it. Um, so essentially, you just need to be careful. Obviously, I've got, I'm going to have this uh, sort of flailing around in the camera, so I need to be careful of that. Um, and you just need to be mindful where, where you're moving. Um, and really, there's two ways I've found, um, for me personally, that, that are the best ways I've found of sharpening an axe. Um, and you can do one of two things. You either treat the axe as if it were a knife, and you lay it on your stone as you would a knife, you tilt it up to the correct angle, so you sort of, yeah, meet your bevel and the edge, and essentially, you just run it down the stone. 
Um, so very, very simply, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Now, let me just move my, my hand back so you can see this a bit better. And essentially, exactly the same as if you are um, sharpening um, a knife, you are looking to essentially just get to that point where it feels like you're starting to shave off a very thin layer of stone. You're not actually seeing anything come off of the stone apart from maybe a little bit of slurry on the top here. Uh, but it's very difficult to describe this on a video. But essentially, um, you're looking to feel for like a biting point. So if I put this a little bit too flat, so I haven't come up right to the edge of the bevel onto the, where, where the edge starts. If I go like this, I'm, I'm, I'm getting no real resistance. Whereas if I tilt it up towards the edge, I can feel the edge trying to bite in um, and that's what you're looking for. Now obviously you don't want to go too far with that because if you start putting it down too acutely on the edge um, you'll just start blunting it or rounding it off. Um, so it is a little bit of trial and error um, and if this is the first time you're doing this um, if you can get your hands on, a, on an old axe or a cheap axe or even a knife because the principle works exactly the same for both um, then what you'll do is use the, um, the sort of, you know, an old knife or, or, or a very cheap knife. More as a brilliant for this, for learning proper technique for sharpening knives. Um, and you just spend a little bit of time kind of working it out. And you do very quickly, I find, get a feel for it. Um, and, and that's what you're looking for. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna spend a few minutes just with this 250 grit. Um, and the other thing I was gonna say is you can find that this will start to dry out while you're doing it, that's fine. Just get, get a little bit of water on your fingers or your hand, just dribble it on, rub it in, um, and you're good to go. And again, as usual with any, any kind of sharpening, if you've, if you've got double, a double-sided blade or two beveled, double beveled, um, you want to do sort of anything between five and ten strokes I find is about right. And then you'll swap over and make sure you're doing the same on the other side. Right then guys, so that's the about no more than 10 minutes work at the very, very most. Um, and again, if you're sharpening like this, um, you, you won't use stones for removing huge amounts of material. That's where your files come in. Um, so really, I'm not looking to massively change the shape or the profile of this, this axe blade. I'm not trying to remove tons of material. All I'm doing is really refining this sort of contour on the edge here. Um, now, what I did want to say um, is if you're using a stone, um, whether it's an oil stone or a wet stone, you need to make sure you use the entire length of your stone. Um, and by that I mean by doing this. So you start off at the bottom, roughly the bottom, and you're running your blade, be it a knife, an axe or whatever, along the complete length. Um, and there's two very good reasons for that. One is it will allow you to keep more control on your angle, because what you don't want to be doing is lifting this up and down as you're sweeping it along. Um, so if you're trying to do that in the middle and you're going kind of like this, it's very, very easy to kind of do this while you're doing it. Much easier and sort of much more intuitive, I find, to try and keep one long sweeping stroke and keep it at the right angle. Um, the other reason for not doing this is that if you are focusing on just one part, take the centre as an example, and you're just trying to sort of work just in the centre, um, you'll very quickly find that you'll start wearing this part away. Um, now if you're only ever going to use the stone for that one thing, it's not so much of a problem. But if you ever use it for another reason again, um, say you use a different axe or a different knife and you decide to do it kind of this way, you're going to have a flat spot or, or a, 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 like a dimple in there or something like that. Um, and what you'll find is that you're then going to come along and then the blade will move, maybe even be imperceptible to you, um, and you'll find the edge is going to be ever so slightly misaligned. Um, so that's a really, really good point. Um, and also, the other thing I was going to mention earlier, I did say there were two ways of doing this. So obviously you can bring your axe across like this, which is perfectly fine, um, very, very easy to do. The other thing you can do, if you want to sort of speed the process up, albeit only very slightly, um, and also use more of the available stone, what you can do is a circular motion. Um, so what you'll do, you'll start here, and you need to make sure you're pushing forwards and not pulling backwards. So the, the blade needs to feel as if it's almost biting into the stone at all times. So what you're doing is this. So you're basically cutting into the stone, or 
not physically cutting in, sorry, that's the wrong terminology. Um, but you're basically trying to take off that very, very thin layer off your stone like this. Um, now obviously I flipped over to the 1000 grit side, so this is really now just refining this blade, refining what I've done. Um, and that's what I'm going to do for the next couple of minutes, just to sort of try and finish this off and then we'll give everything a test cut. The other thing to say guys is what you can do while you're doing this and very good reason for keeping a rag around um, is just to give the blade a little wipe off every now and again and what you can do I'll bring this a little bit closer in you just want to be checking the edge make sure you've got no high spots or low spots and I mean I can't actually see any on here there's a tiny little bit on the end here you may or may not be able to see it the lighting's not great in here at the moment um, but I can see it's a very very small it's not going to affect anything this sort of size but I'll give you as an example so there's a tiny little high spot there um, and what you can do once you've found it you can just give that area just a little bit more attention than the rest and generally you don't need much and you just basically take that little high spot off um, so hopefully that makes sense so again I'm just going to spend probably another I don't know five or ten minutes and, and by the time you get to this point and you're on a, a thousand grit stone you don't need to do a great deal of work anymore at all um, you can spend longer on the sort of thousand grit and higher if you want to really polish that blade up before you get to stropping um, but there's no real need to unless you're you know, a bit of a perfectionist you like to have that real nice sort of shiny finish and as I said this axe is predominantly going to be used for some um, well again it's the wrong word but some martial arts practice if you if you want to call it that um, so I don't want this razor sharp because I'm going to be hitting things with this um, I'm going to be doing some test cutting with this at some point hopefully and, and if anyone's interested I'll happily do a video on it um, and basically a bit like swords you know a bit of a misconception really um, that you know swords were razor sharp able to shave the hairs from your arms now don't get me wrong um, some some swords and acting things can very well be made to be that sharp um, but in a sort of you know if you're looking into a more historical setting you know these things are are being used to strike people um, they're being used to strike shields they're being used to strike um, leather and chainmail armor um, and if you have a really, really fine edge on there, um, you're going to damage the edge a lot quicker if it's very, very fine. Um, so what you want is a good sharp edge, don't get me wrong, they do need to be sharp, um, but at the same time, they need to be uh, robust enough to not be damaged you know, the first time you hit something with it. Um, so anyway, guys, like I say, I'm going to carry on doing this for the next sort of few minutes or so. Um, I'll come back once I've given it a quick strop. I'll show you what the edge is looking like, um, and we'll give it another little test cut. Right then, guys, so we're done. Um, and if I just bring this a bit closer, hopefully you can see here. Um, I realise the lighting's not great. I did lose the light a lot quicker than I was expecting to this afternoon. Um, but, you know, I've given it a quick strop. Um, we've gone through a 250 and a 1000 grit water stone um, and it's turned out pretty well it certainly feels a lot sharper um, it's a little bit of a micro bevel on there which is ideal for what I want because that won't break and split um, as easily as a, a really fine edge um, and again if I just take this again this paper is slightly damp so you'll have to bear with me but again I'm now cutting it you know it's certainly not razor sharp by any means um, but it is cutting well sort of cutting at least there we go so you know it's not by any means as sharp as my grand axes axes um, that is fairly deliberate because as I say I'm going to be sort of hitting things with this um, as I say I might do some test cutting as well um, I might get some bottles, uh, just some empty water bottles, some full up water bottles should I say, um, just to see how this performs with sort of a, you know, a good swing behind it. Um, and if anybody wants to see that, I'm more than happy to do a video for you guys as well. Um, so that's really sort of the basics of sharpening an axe. Um, this one was not as sharp as I would normally look to sharpen one as I've said. Um, and obviously there's different reasons behind that. But this process works exactly the same on any axe. Um, whether it's sort of, you know, a, a specialist carving axe, um, a carpenter's axe, 
you know, something like a Grand Scores or a Halter Fours or you know, any, anything in between basically and it will allow you to get a really, really good edge on them. Um, so I hope it was useful guys, um, comments and questions in the box below, hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys.